Alright, so the video you're about to watch is basically, as you can see right down there, my gas tank ruptured on my Volkswagen, so you're going to get to see me repair not only my gas tank, but my exhaust and a lot of other dumb components that went wrong. So, you're in for a treat. I did more repairing than I did recording, so you're going to see a lot of jump skips, but I hope you enjoy the video. You'll have to excuse the background noise. They're currently doing yard work here at the complex. Right here is my 2013 Volkswagen Jetta, and we're trying to fix that fuel leak we've discovered. I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. There's the back seat removed here. They do make it really easy to get to the fuel pump system, which is nice. Because Jetta's and fuel leakage is no new combination. They have always had this issue. All Volkswagens have had this issue. The fuel pump assembly is right behind here. So normally if you take a flathead or a knife, you can peel this off, being careful, of course. We're going to get at that. I'm also going to clean this out. We wanted to vacuum this crap out of here, so we're also going to do that. Alright, so kind of the pain in the ass part about this vehicle is all of the fuel pumping components are integrated in the tank. So this is where you get to the actual tank and the fuel pump. The tank's right there, the top of the tank, that is. And the top looks fine. There's leaves and debris in there, but that's, that's common with vehicles. So, the pump itself looks fine. I don't see any residue up here. Which, oh wow, I smell that though. I do smell it. There's something down there. So we're gonna disconnect the pump and get this thing out of here. And we're going to go into the tank and try to drain it right from here. Because we can just hook up a small little 12 volt fuel pump and just, or tap into the existing fuel pump using uh, alligator clips and just pull fuel out of it. Because there's no point in leaving this the way it is. So here's a little bit of common advice for people who are doing this. Yeah, I'm really sorry about the noise. So in here, this is the actual connector that plugs in bottom here that is your ground connector for your fuel pump and this guy all the way over here to the left is your positive connector for the fuel pump those three pins in there are your reference 5 volt connections for your fuel float sensor I don't know exactly if these are floating here or not probably not I don't remember exactly the connection pinouts but my assumption is all the way to the right or to the left excuse me is your negative 5 volt signal in the middle is your reference 5 volts and your actual signal 5 volts all the way to the right. So for anyone who's wondering, that's normally how they do them. Yeah, I think we can go a little bit more though. Oh, okay. So what I'm doing now is, with the assist of my friend, who is also named Tyler, we are throwing gas out of my pump because it is, you know, out of the tank. So I got the fuel lines hooked in, the fuel lines are fine, I'm just pumping gas out because I have it pot wired into my cigarette lighter. So I turn the ignition on, pumps fuel, and we're not wasting it, so it's going to his tank. So at least someone can get it, because I, I don't want it on the ground. So we're waiting for it to be full. It's not going very fast, so it's very hard to tell, because that little... All right, cut it. Cut it. Check your uh, gas gauge. How stupid thing keeps shocking me. Is it full? Oh, very, very close. You want to see the line? Yeah, sure. Might as well. Yeah, it's like right there. It's got more, though. It has quite a bit more, actually. The door is pushing up against that, so let me get a screwdriver. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Ward never makes it easy. All right, we got all the fuel out of the car, and I've got it elevated here, and the back tire's off. We're ready to drop the tank. Let's see where the hell this thing went wrong. You can see my brake rotors are actually glazed, so... I don't know what I was doing, but... That's definitely signs of heat. Heat fading and glazing, so... The pads are... Well, they, they're okay. They're better, but they're okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and release the parking brake now that I've got it all propped up here. Thing is, the parking brake actually runs. Come on, don't be anal. Directly to the calipers. Release them. Make sure I 
check these because if they have any cracks in there, I'm fucked. They look okay from right here. So we're not going to touch them. Just got some rot here. Oh. Car is seven years old and it's already rotting like a pig. Can't wait to see it get older. Holy shit. That is rust. This thing's not even that old. And yeah, right there is the exhaust mount. I'm going to end up reattaching my exhaust. While I'm down here, I'm probably going to end up bleeding the brake lines. Because the thing's up in the air. I might as well bleed the backs. Because you're always supposed to go from the furthest part of the car to the front when bleeding the brakes. So we're going to bleed them. Because where I got the back is the most back of the car up. And the brake, the brake fluid I have is not really that great currently. Those are brake lines. Should be fun. Rut row shaggy. So this is my ghetto ass exhaust that I had to temporarily rig up. And so I could get a proper muffler and everything on this like I wanted to. And now here is the gas tank. I don't know why Volkswagen decided to put it in such close proximity to the fucking fuel, but whatever. Point is, that right there wasn't there. That right there is the result of heat. A lot of it, actually. See that dimple? That's aluminum. That melted the aluminum. Did you see what else it melted? Well, the tank is repairable. Where was it leaking gas from? Well, at least we know where it's coming from now, and we're gonna have to go ahead and unbolt it. There's a bolt here, here, which holds the main strap underneath. I'm not too sure how we're gonna get this other crap out. This, look at this. That's really cheap. Should not have done that. We're going to take all this heat shielding out here, replace it with some quality exhaust wrap. That's all Volkswagen could have done was just exhaust wrap it. Why did they have to, like... Because this shit don't work. Clearly it doesn't work. This is really terrible. I just, I, I don't understand why on earth Volkswagen did this. Come on, pop up there, you little bitch. Oh, okay. Screw you two. I'm gonna need both hands to get that back up there. One of the funny things is, you can see where I was limping this thing home yesterday night. That's kind of funny. You can just see where it just kind of like gushed everywhere. So here's the heat shield. Responsible. And here's the part right here where the exhaust was. The exhaust heated up this very thin piece of aluminum and actually started to bend it back due to the airflow from the exhaust. But it didn't actually is what caused the ruptured line. So, lack of proper heat shielding is to blame for this. So, this is like the cheapest heat shielding material you could ever use. So we're going to take it off, and we're going to exhaust wrap this thing properly, and hopefully get it to cool right. And I'm going to be ending up putting in a new exhaust anyhow, so I'm alright with that. Now, because we are partially dropping the tank, I've gotten all the mounts out except for a couple here, so the tank is, as you can see up there, it's almost out, and the tank is strained. The only problem is the hose-up connections over there are going to be basically pain in the ass, because I'm going to have to remove those. So, I'm thinking of removing 
heat shielding here. There's not really a need for it if I just put good exhaust wrap on it, but in order to remove it, I have to take the exhaust mount right here off. And I'm thinking of actually cutting this tank and splitting it or installing a new tank, which would consist of a fuel send. And the fuel send will send from a fuel pump and there will be a pump that will loop between the two constantly to help circulate gas. So I'll have a split tank system and that way I'll have a main tank and an auxiliary that I'll be able to dump into this tank. The problem is I'm debating whether or not I want to do that because right now the fuel system is completely intact and um, that is actually fixable right down here. By the way, you can see that I'm right now. I actually moved myself in a position where I could see it. Yep, I'll get you some light. There you go. The heat from the exhaust was what was causing it. And as you can see, all the gas markings actually indicate that too. So we have a couple options here of how we want to go about doing this. We actually could flex seal this, which I don't know exactly how flex seal would react with this. Or we could see if it holds gas or water. I'm going to take it out, obviously. I might fill it with water, see if it holds. Regardless, this is a terrible... It's plastic. It's made of fucking plastic, guys. Look. That's plastic. It's the same crap that you use for a milk jug. It's so bad. I would have expected a lot more out of Volkswagen than this. But there's a lot of fuel tank room that they didn't use for the most part, so it's kind of interesting why they didn't. There's got to be a reason behind that. However, I am presented with the option to do a split tank, which means, in theory, if I wanted to cut this tank in half and have a smaller tank on this side, I would, in theory, be able to, and I'd like to at least, on a larger tank where my spare tire goes because I don't normally keep a spare tire in this car. So it would be sealed inside the compartment and that would be the auxiliary tank which would be much 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 larger. And the auxiliary tank would be responsible and I could just straight this to the back and do something I've always wanted to do which was to double pipe it out the back there from the actual rear fender just pipe it out to the side of the bumper which would be nice through a T-pipe, but who knows. And there's our exhaust mount up right there. We're going to have to remove and fix. And there's another exhaust mount over there that we're going to have to remove and figure out what we're going to do with. Mounting this thing up ain't going to be the easiest, to be fair. And I'm going to have to figure out a custom exhaust for this, so i got to run that pipe either runs to the back there. I'd like to run it to the back. Either that, or i got to run a pipe shooting out to the side, which theoretically isn't going to be as easy as it looks. This is all wasted space, Volkswagen. Come on, I know the thing is hot, but a lot of wasted space. Volkswagen easily could have split the tank and put a secondary tank over here and just ran it all the way all the way to the back all the way to the back and then had a muffler where the spare tire goes so I don't exactly know what they were thinking with these cars but you know we'll get there when we get there I still gotta pull the exhaust mounts off so we'll get it set up
Okay, it's now currently like late, like 7 o'clock kind of late, and I'm basically ready to pack it up for the day. Here's what I've gotten accomplished. <laughs> oh my god. Tires are off. Got the tank out. Fuel sending units out. Okay, so we're heading back to the storage area here. Put my uh, wagon back because I can't really do any more for this day. We got a lot done, but it's getting dark and I'm going to have to do it tomorrow. But I will, however, show you the fuel tank and what it looks like. These burn marks are what's responsible. Right there's a hole. You see that little hole right there? That's what did it. Alrighty, so it is currently uh, the next day. Here's what I got done yesterday that you didn't see me do on video. Gas tank got pulled, you probably saw that. I ran new gas lines, did some work to the EVAP system, because uh, they use some really cheap quality hoses for the EVAP system. I'm not going to lie, and I don't want to get back at it or have to do it later. Let's go into my shop area here. And we'll see what I've gotten done. Oh yeah, it smells like arson in here with all the gas. Alright, so this is my solution. So, I'm still on the fence with what I'm going to do with this. I can try to see if it holds gas through this, but here's the other problem. Right here. The filler necks I have disconnected purposefully because of the obvious conditions that they're in. I'm going to have to find a way to get a hose on here and to slit the hose appropriately to the actual level necessary. Although it looks like this actually right here is the actual filler part and it's sealed. I don't know about, this is for the EVAP, that's right. So that's that. But mainly today is exhaust day. We're gonna go ahead and draw out a schematic doing measurements. I've got some old exhaust components over there that we might be stealing. Those came off of a Mark VI Golf. Um, will not be resonator. The resonator is for my car, but the actual secondary muffler piece right there is off of Mark VI Golf, and I'm hoping the exhaust bend will be usable. But I'm going to have to use a angle grinder. I have somewhere around here. I have an angle grinder somewhere, and we might angle grind it off in order to get what we want. Okay, so we're going to angle grind it right now. I'm going to go ahead and get me on video. Just a couple of big tips of do's and don'ts. Don't use sweatpants when angle grinding. Always have personal protective equipment. I am what you call a professional retard. So I'm going to be using very little to none of these. I am putting safety glasses though. You can't fuck with your eyes. You can really kill yourself with that. <laughs>
Right now we're on our way to AutoZone. I borrowed my neighbor's older Corolla here. So I've got the phone literally propped up on the instrument cluster. It's fine. Old little 98 Corolla. It's not a bad little car. Turns out, so it turns out that I don't think anyone sells radiator hose, or at least the radiator hose that I'm looking for, so I might try something really sketchy called the junkyard. Uh, I'm looking for like two and an eighth inch hose, but everyone's looking at me like I'm batshit insane, like it doesn't fucking exist, so. so we've gotten a lot done here, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to start it up here. Hopefully we'll check the pressure. Whoops. Something is burning in there. Okay, that's cool. What's burning? That's nice. That explains the maple spear up smell. It's burning off the, yeah, right there. It's the bottom one. It's burning off of the tip. It's awesome in a fold. Okay, it should be fixed. what I'm using for right now it'll probably get removed yes I don't know if you can see it on camera but yeah that flex pipe is glowing red I've got it really hot right now I've been revving the engine at four grand for almost about 30 minutes just to check pressure and I don't think it's gonna work with this tank so I might have to go in a different direction with uh, the high temperature that is given off the exhaust tank is kind of 
it's not liking it, so... I'll have to rig something up for it. So here's what I've gotten done with the car so far while I'm looking for my wallet because my stupid ass left it in here somewhere. Um, gas tank has been mounted back in, car is running, and it is holding gas. My downside is the, fill, uh, the fuel filler neck is no, not connected to the gas tank as well as the EVAP system. Although I have redone the gas lines, the, ga or the EVAP lines. And for whatever reason, the EVAP is reading perfectly fine, even though it's not connected to the actual tank. I don't know if it's because it's sucking from the charcoal canister or what, but it's reading perfectly fine, and that's a little bit weary. I don't understand why the engine light went off when it's been connected, so... I also had to replace this rim and tire. First off, the tire's obviously fucking bald. Uh, yeah, you can tell I take good care of my stuff. Um, this is the wear indicators right here. As you can see, it is, it is basically completely worn in. Um, yeah, and it's cracking, but the main reason that I'm not using this rim is that it's bent quite substantially, actually. I bent it back, but if you look over here, now you can't really see it with the, uh, the hubcap on, but underneath this, uh, it's around there. You can see really how bent up that, that section is right there. Right there, it's really bent. This thing's basically a fucking oval. Right there, it's really bad. And you can see it's just as bad over here, too, so. It, honestly, this is not... I'm not going to be using this rim. I'll be using the spare tire rim for right now. Being that it's a full-size spare, it's fine. I have no problem using it until this is all aligned again and fixed up, but I'm not going to be using these rims. I'll be buying new ones eventually. Hopefully. Looking for my wallet, can't find it, so something tells me it's in the car, or in the house. Really hope I have it, because, you know, it would be nice. Uh, right now, we gotta go to the junkyard, and we're gonna go ahead and try pulling a radiator hose off of something like a small block Chevy, something that has a decently large diameter going to the radiator. And the reason and rationality behind doing this is that uh, that hose will be able to be clamped onto the gas tank to attach the two components to each other. That is my theory and thought. I really hope this goes to plan. I would really like to be able to fill my gas tank up because right now if you try to fill it up it's just gonna dump gas straight in the ground and I'll show you that in a little bit here. First let me find my wallet. We gotta go to the junkyard. Let me shut the lights off in here because like Maintenance gets really annoyed. Right now it's raining outside, so it's sucky, but we'll make it work. Hmm. Oh, Mitsubishi. Hmm. Orange Police Department impound, huh? That's kind of funny. No, we just kind of gives them to these dudes. Honda. Oh shit, it's an old GMC oil tanker. That's pretty cool. Hell tow truck too. Getting there. What the hell is this thing? Ah, Volvo's. I wonder if my old two forties over here. Holy shit, there's some old beetles here. No kidding. There's no floor in it. 
Oh, this is what the beetles look like on the inside, huh? No, is the mouse nest a premium option or what? Here's an old Passat wagon. Probably got what I need. Oh, that was a familiar sight. 2.0 single overhead cam, just like mine. Except this one's got the metal intake manifold. Of course, it's got the metal intake manifold. Why does mine have to have a plastic one? That makes no fucking sense to me. There's no cooling hoses on here I can rob, huh? Holy shit, that's the same radiator as mine, too. Same expansion valve. Reservoir's different. Get out of here, you stupid dub. Nah. This ought to work. Take a look at this Mazda. It has a V6 of some kind, or maybe it's an inline 3, I'm not sure, but... No, it's it's a V6, a very aggressive angled V6, almost like a Boxer 6 at this point. But look at this. Here it comes in, but on this side, it's, it's not intercooled, but on this side, it comes this little air intercooler thing up top here, and then it... So half of these banks are intercooled and the other half aren't? Oh no, it goes over to here. But uh, that must be a damper to allow it to warm up faster. I don't know, that's, that's just stupid. What the fuck? He ended up giving me that thing for free, so how awesome is that? That stupid hose. I have to pay for it. I really hope it's the right size, because I kind of explained to him how, why I was using it, and he'd probably charge me next time for a piece of frickin' hose. So it's increasingly apparent that the um, nor'easter that they predicted might hit us is actually gonna keep coming at us till later tonight, so I may not be working on the car that much today. From the looks of it right now, it's probably raining, oh Jesus, it's really raining pretty bad here, so I may not be working on it. All I gotta do now is just put the exhaust mounts on, so I guess my best bet is to wait for the rain to stop a little bit, and then hurry my ass under that car, get that stupid mount on. This is nice. Where's my afternoon? It's actually thundering now, shockingly. It's only April and it's thundering? Damn. Rain slow down. So we're gonna... <laughs> She is on the ground. We are ready to test drive. Hopefully. We need to go around the corner and get gas because I have literally fumes. Alrighty, we are here at the gas station. It is holding gas, as you can see. And we are, we filled up successfully without it pissing everywhere. So we're good. We're holding gas. Test a couple more things and then we'll go home. Drive it for a little bit, see how it handles. So, we made it to the gas station. Put gas to the funnel. It worked. And it is holding gas, as you can see. Mission well done.
All right, my dudes, I am satisfied with these results. The car is driving phenomenal so far. I haven't noticed any faults. So we'll do a zero to 60 acceleration test here. So it drove great for the test drives. Mission accomplished, boys. We've successfully completed our objective. Till next time, my dudes.